Hello, hello, hello. Thank you all for joining my YouTube channel. I am Nikki Nicole, and today I am going to be talking about my journey on trying to conceive. So, all you guys that are watching, please like, subscribe, and tell somebody else about my YouTube channel. That way, we can probably help somebody else that is going through the same thing. All right, so my husband is here with me. Um, you can't visually see him, but he is here. Um, and I know I made a few videos um, earlier today and yesterday in regards to my journey <clears throat> on trying to conceive. Sorry, my throat for some reason is very scratchy. I don't know. But anyway, so... Um, I made a few videos not too long ago, and then I ended up doing another uh, YouTube channel so that I can record better because I think the quality of my phone or something, I don't know. Excuse me. Whatever happened. Um, I don't know, but I had to do a video over. So anyway, this is going to be the actual video where I go into details about everything. I want everybody that's watching, everybody that is looking at this to know that I am being so honest with you. I'm not going to lie about anything. I'm going to keep it as real as I can, okay? So I don't know who you are and what you may be going through, but I know what I'm going through and I know what I'm trying to get to. So hopefully I can sprinkle some baby dust over there and you can send it back my way. So anyways let's get started um i do want to say first before i start i do apologize for the quality of my videos um <clears throat> the ones that i did today and the ones that i did um prior to i do apologize for those videos if they weren't up to par where you really needed to know what was going on i was in a rush situation long story short i was at work um, another thing is it was late, um, yesterday, which is today is, um, September the 15th, 2020. And it was September 14th when I first, uh, tried to shoot a video and put it on YouTube and I didn't want to wake everybody in the house. So I just pretty much tried to be as quiet as I could. And I did not really get to do everything I wanted to do. Okay, so um, same with the video from earlier today. I was at work, could not. My manager was wondering what was taking me so long in the restroom. And he's Chinese, so <sighs> whatever. I love my manager. He's great, but I just was trying to do something, and I didn't want everybody in my business. Okay, boom. So for those who don't know and have not watched my video from... The previous one me and my husband have been trying to conceive my husband and i however y'all want to put it i'm not going to sugarcoat nothing i'm not going to i'm going to tell you as everything i can and i hope that you really understand and that i'm not trying to be funny or nothing i'm not saying nobody else makes fake videos or anything all i'm saying is i gotta keep it very real with myself and with you guys because i want you to be able to see this video subscribe it and tell somebody else about it so that it can help others so <clears throat> again me and my husband have been together for seven almost eight years we've been married um for quite some time now and we have been trying to conceive and nothing has worked okay um we was trying natural and then nothing worked. Um, I was diagnosed with PCOS back in 2014, I believe. And then I was told I had small cysts on my ovaries and that it was not stopping me from conceiving. And that maybe I just needed to be put on metformin um, to make me ovulate regularly. Um, however, I did not like the way the metformin made me feel back in 2014 
and I was, I think it was, I'm sorry, it may have been 2013. However, it was some years back. I don't really remember. I've went and grew so much since then. So I don't really remember, but I know that they tried to. I didn't really take the metformin, so I couldn't tell you what it did besides when it when I was first taking it, how it made me feel. So I stopped taking it. I did not like it at that moment, so I stopped taking it. So, however, I am originally from Texarkana. So shout out to everybody from Texarkana that is watching and hope that you use your mouth wisely and speak on this video with wisdom okay if you do decide to watch this and want to tell somebody else because this is me expressing myself so with that being said we moved to dallas and i recently just went to my doctor um to my OBGYN. i was referred by my pcp to my doctor um, who asked me a lot of questions like um have I ever had positive ovulation? Have I ever had any children? Um, have my husband had any children? Um, well, do he have any children? Um, have I ever had miscarriage? Have I ever, um, what was another question that he asked me? Have I ever got a positive pregnancy test? And um, everything was no. No, I have not had any of those so um i told him that i once was on metformin and the doctor then when i moved here a doctor tried to put me on clomid but he said there was no reason to put a person on clomid if you're not ovulating or you're not sure whether you're ovulating so he said the first step was to um do a pap smear to see if it was normal or abnormal and then also put me on metformin to see if I ovulate because my cycles are irregular um back two steps when I was in my hometown and I did um go see a doctor um taking the metformin and not really taking it like I'm supposed to um like I said I did not have any positive pregnancies or anything like that that came about so he did question me about um the metformin and I told him I used to take it but I did not like it and he said well I'm going to put you back on it I need you to take this twice a day he put me on um 500 milligrams a day um taking it twice a day so a thousand a day um and told me to monitor my ovulation he told me to make sure that i buy the um pregnancy i mean the ovulation excuse me the ovulation tests that actually tell you um digital like the yes or no's or uh, not the yes or no's but the blinking smiley faces you guys know um so i went and did everything he told me to do um april of 2020 I started on my journey. So when I started on my journey, um, again, anybody who had PCOS, I do want to say this. I'm sorry I had to go back, but that's what I was. I lost my thought back not too long ago. But back in 2013, 14, whichever one it was, um, when I was diagnosed with PCOS, I went to the doctor to see about getting the cyst removed. Um, it's basically a small cyst that was on my ovaries. Um, and they said I can get it removed. Sometimes they go away on their own. Um, I don't have to. But that was what was causing, causing the irregular periods. And I think that happened because of um, back when I was pretty much trying you know to get the little ovulations and things going I did I wasn't monitoring any of that but they told me that I could get the cysts removed so I went to go you know, in pre-op to get them removed to go I went to go and sign the paperwork and the guy did the ultrasound um, on me again before um, and when he did that basically 
it came back. The vaginal ultrasound. Um, he did that on me. I think I'm sitting it right. I'm, I'm new to all of this. And he basically said, hey, the cysts are gone. So there was no reason to get them removed. So from that point, fast forward back to where I was talking about. My doctor put, I moved to Dallas. My doctor put me on the metformin um, in 2020 this year. I was taking the metformin in April. And April and May, um, I took the metformin. Um, May, I did ovulate. I did see ovulation in May. I did not like the way the metformin made me feel. It made me feel sick. It made me feel dizzy. The first week of taking it, I was like, ugh, I don't want to take this no more. Excuse me. So, of course, my husband told me, you know, we, if we were trying to conceive, then you need to take this. So, I went ahead and continued taking it. I did skip around. I'm not going to lie. I did skip around sometimes because we had family get-togethers as far as my children, my stepchildren, and, you know, my husband goes. We were, you know, out. So, I didn't want to be feeling bad in front of everybody. I'm just like, huh, I don't want to feel like this. So, I did skip around sometimes. So, anyway, but I still ovulated in May, I believe. So, after May, I stopped taking the metformin. I just did not like the way it made me feel. So I scheduled me an appointment um, in July. I told my doctor that after May, we'll be taking it for April, part of March and April. I took it the end of March. Um, my birthday came, so I started taking it in April. April, May, I took it. I took my first ovulation um, in May. I believe it was May. It was April or May. Nevertheless, I ovulated one of those months. I tried to conceive that away. It did not work. Um, but I did see positive ovulation. So thanks to Metformin for that. Um, after that, um, June, July, I tested ovulation test for July. I did not test for June because I knew I didn't take the Metformin. And I was like, there's no point. So... Because my cycles are irregular and I would not be wanting to try to remember to take them at that time. So, anyway, um, July, I scheduled an appointment. I went to see my doctor, my OBGYN. If, for those who don't know, I went to my OBGYN. Um, he is a man. And so, when I went to him, he asked me about my ovulation. I had to be so honest. And I told him that I stopped taking it because of the way it made me feel. And I wanted to do something different. Um, if he could put me on something different, I said, hey, can you give me the Clomid? He said, well, there's no point, like I told you before, of taking the Clomid. If you notice, he, you told me that you ovulated in May, but you did not ovulate for June and July. Or it was ovulated for April, but did not ovulate for uh, May and June. Or whatever it may have been how it was however basically his point was you did ovulate when you took the metformin the metformin uh reduces the inflammation something like that i guess it's what it's supposed to do so that you are able to ovulate um that's what i was told <clears throat> so anyway um i was like okay that's fine I guess I'll keep on taking the metformin. Blah. I did not want to take it, but I didn't have a choice because I wanted children. So I'm like, I have to do this. Um, so anyway, after he told me to take the metformin, he said this, I will go ahead and give you the clomid. He said, well, I will tell you that you need to go and get an HSG test done. Um, we do need to get that as soon as possible. That will tell us a lot because there's no point of taking the metformin nor the clomid if we cannot tell whether your tubes are blocked or not. So I said, okay, boom. So we went in to get me scheduled. Um, they sent over my referral to get me scheduled to take the um, HSG test. I cannot pronounce that word and I'm not going to even try. HSG test is a test that looks at your tubes. It sends dye down your tubes 
some type of dye down your tubes to see if they are open. I will tell you all about that test and how it made me feel. I will tell all about that later. Right now, I'm just going over through my history of where all of this started from. So, um, cause that is a whole nother story. Um, and it gets deep when it comes down to the HSG, because I want people to know the real reasons, different reasons that you can have closed to. So that's another story anyway. So anyway, I got scheduled for my HSG test, um, shortly after due to COVID-19, a lot of things, it was hard for me to get in right then and there. So once he got me scheduled, because he did want to, when he when I first went to see him, he wanted to get the HSG test done. But for some reason, due to COVID back in March, when it hit Dallas like it did, everything was pretty much shut down. So it was hard to get me in. So um, the, I ended up, and this was Cityville, they were trying to get me in. It's a uh, place, fertility place, I guess, in Cityville that, that, that does the test. So I ended up having to go to another fertility center um, to get it done. I was so excited when I got ready to get scheduled. I did by chance get the clomid. He gave me the, the clomid, 50 milligram of the clomid. I um, was supposed to start taking a clomid in August, which would have been my next cycle last month, August of 2020. Um, so I will uh, tell you a little bit about what days. I'm sorry excuse me y'all um but i will tell you guys later about what days because i can't find my other phone right now but i will tell you about like what days i did take the clone in and da, da 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 and how everything worked and made me feel i'll tell you that later so anyways um i uh was still taking the metformin of course and i was taking it like i'm supposed to everything like that so august came August 2020, this last past month, and um, I went, my cycle came on August the 22nd, so of course, my doctor told me to take my clomid five days um, on the fifth day of my cycle, and so in between trying to get scheduled for um, HSG and taking the clomid, and then my cycle came I was basically trying to figure everything out. So um, I got a call saying that they, re they received my referral and they want to schedule. And I was like, whoa, that was quick. So, hey, I got scheduled for that after I came on my cycle, August 22nd of 2020. Um, I was thinking my cycle was going to come earlier than that, usually between the 12th and 15th. But it's irregular. So you never know with my cycle. So um, anyway. After I went to um, the appointment, well, rewind, not after. When I came on my cycle, day five of my cycle, I started taking the clomid. Okay, so um, after starting taking the clomid on August 26th, y'all excuse me because literally I have to remember all of these days. 22nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, that's five days. So on the fifth day, I took the clomid and from the 26th to the 30th, is correct? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Yeah. 26 to the 30th. That's me having to remember all of these months. I do jot, jot it down. I just cannot find my phone right now. So I took the clomid on the 28th. I was supposed to be coming off of my cycle. I went and got the HSG test done. Fast forward, um, my cycle was a little more days, more than what I thought it was going to be. And I was wondering what was going on. So I was kind of scared. I was like, why am I still having a little, you know, it's actually heavier than what it was. It was not even heavy. It was like light the whole month of me being on. So what is going on? So I went to see my OBGYN and I told him, you know, this, this, and that, um, this is what I was feeling, and I don't know why I'm still spotting or whatever, but, and he said, well, what was going on? I told him 
what I was feeling because I actually went to get my results. I'll tell you guys about my results and then all of that later. I told him what I was feeling and he told me you were not supposed to take the clomid while getting the HSG test done. So you may have some spotting or bleeding through the next few days, even two weeks. And I was like, oh my God, like this is scary. Are you telling me I'm going to possibly bleed for another two weeks? How am I supposed to try to conceive? So whatever the case was, I did listen to what he said. He just told me it's nothing he can do. I just have to go, you know, on with it and wait on it to stop. So um, with that being said, I pretty much moved forward. And about four days after I left my doctor's office, um, which... Yeah, about four days after I left my doctor's office, I stopped bleeding, which I was thankful for. Um, and then from that point on, um, it was around Labor Day weekend, and I was pretty busy. September ish, uh, September the 2nd was my first day actually trying to conceive. I did not have a lot of time in August because I had been <clears throat> so busy. So. September the 2nd of 2020 was my first day of trying to conceive. So I did baby dance on that day. And then um, on September the 5th, I ovulated. I was tracking my ovulations as he was telling me to from day 10 to day 20. He was telling me to track my ovulation. So I did track my ovulations. And on day 15 of my cycle day, I did get a positive ovulation. So I baby danced. Yay. Um, and so after that, um, I tried to take another test on the 16th day, cycle day 16, um, which would have been the 6th of September 2020. But... I had family over and I was trying to sneak and do this because I didn't want everybody in my business. And so I pretty much missed um, seeing the blinking smiley face, of course. And so I had to pull it out and look on the stick. And it actually was both of them were very dark. So I knew that I was still ovulating and I wanted to baby dance again, but I couldn't. So because I had family over. So whatever the case was. Um, that is my story on how I begin trying to conceive with fertility drugs, um, and trying to boost my chances of getting pregnant. Um, I am going to make another video on telling you how I actually had my HSG test done um, what my results were, um, what I was told about uh, my results when it came down to trying to conceive. Um, I'm going to go into detail about that also. And then I'm going to go into detail about um, when I took the pregnancy test today and when I took it yesterday um, so that you guys can kind of see you know, where all of this is coming from. So I really hope that this helped somebody on just me telling you my journey on what I had to go through, what I had to experience. Um, and basically from 2000 and I guess 13, whatever, 14, um, back until when I moved to Dallas in 2015, and I actually went on ahead and tried after um, being here for about three, about four years. We were trying naturally uh, when I moved to Dallas. And then I ended up um, this past year, which, well, not this past year, in 2020, going to the doctor to go ahead and try. So technically in April is when we started, well, March, I'll say March. Technically, in March is when we started trying to conceive with fertility drugs. So, Clomid is not a bad thing. I will do another video and tell you about the side effects of Clomid and how it made me feel 
and if it worked and of course you should know somewhat of that it did work because um i did ovulate and i definitely felt a lot of the symptoms so with that being said i really do appreciate you guys watching and i hope that this helps you out to know possibly what you could put together combinations of fertility drugs and other medicines metformin is for diabetes uh diabetics but they give it to also people that are diagnosed with pcos and it does help you at the beginning of it it does make you feel like crap um you i had diarrhea very bad sorry t probably tt uh tmi i said tt i'm thinking about ttc but i i really had very bad bad bowel movements of the first week of trying it i was very nauseated um i did not want to eat anything really um i was you know just tired all the time very much of fatigue i was very tired all the time i did not like the way it made me feel at all but i know that when trying to conceive you got to do what you got to do so i'm trying to get this this baby bop coming i love it i'm trying to push it I don't want to give up on it. I'm going to keep on trying. My husband is ready. I'm ready. We're ready. Um, I do want to let you guys know I do have an adopted child. His name. Well, I'm not going to put all my business out there like that. Not right now. But I do have an adopted child um, that I took in. I've had him since he was seven months. I do thank God every day for him. He is a blessing to me and he teaches me a lot on how to be a mother so i really really do uh want him to grow up and know that you know you have brothers and sisters he does my husband has two children that are my stepchildren a girl and a boy um and they are eight and nine and they have been in my life since they were babies also 10 and uh one years old 10 months and one years old so with that being said um we have children. My husband has children by con making them with his um, the mother of his children. And so, I mean, now that that is my husband, I definitely want to have children with him. And he's ready to have them with me. Even though we have them, we're ready to expand our family. So, um, even if you don't have children of your own and you're just with your stepchildren those are still your children at the end of the day and you're learning how to be a mother so never give up or never think that it's going to blow up in your face because you don't have your own children it will happen just keep the faith believe and pray and know that god is he can always make a way and he will make a way for you i know that it is in my plans and it is in his will that i will conceive um so on that note, I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to go into, so now you know everything as far as my journey started. So now I'm going to go into the tests that I was taking and why I was taking those tests um, today and yesterday. So thank you.